Hello and welcome to video number 11 in the Different Angle 3D video tutorial series. This is the third video in the project where we turn a default cube into a hay barn. Um, the first of these project videos was video number 9 where we took a couple of uh, photographs of a hay barn and resized them, scaled them, so they'd become useful to use as a reference so we could lay out the structure of the barn. And in video number 10, we took the default cube, changed its shape into the shape of an RSJ or rolled steel joist, and then used the reference images we created in the previous video to lay out, scale the RSJ to the correct size, and then lay out the RSJ as the framework of the barn we're creating. In that video, we gave the hay barn a curved roof, so it's representative of a Dutch barn rather than a portal frame that's used in most modern day barns. This video, we're going to take the frame that we've constructed and add purlins to support the um, corrugated roofing and side sheets that are used on it. And at the end of the video, we'll possibly give the components some colour so we can differentiate one from another. So we'll get straight on, reopen the file where we've um, created the Dutch barn frame. Right, this is where we finished off with the last video, where we've got the, the main frames, um, five of the frames arrayed together to form the main structure. There's a little bit of cleaning up to do before we've finished with the, the RSJ frames and move on to the, uh, the coverings the barn. So um, for this video I've activated the screen keys. At the moment it only shows the first command so if you're doing multiple shortcuts within a command you'll only get the first one. So move an object, you select the items you want to move and grab them so you use the G shortcut um, and then if you want to set an axis so you press X for the X axis the X key doesn't show on screen keys. Um, I haven't found a way around that yet but uh, I will talk through it in the video. So one of the first things that needs cleaning up is when we spun the um, the arc of the RSJ that makes up the roof um, we took the profile from the top of the vertical RSJ and if we zoom in on that area um, I'm going to press uh, numpad 5 which puts you into orthographic view which is a, a little bit different to the perspective to work with but it gives you much better resolution when you're actually zooming in and, and working on screen. So we'll tab into edit mode and then zoom in. Um, I'm going to go into numpad 7 for the top view and zoom in on the very top um, where the placement of the very first vertices of this um, arc of uh, vertices that was spun is positioned and if we go into Z press the Z key to go into the um, shading mode and go to wireframe and zoom in what you'll see on that vertex in fact I'll go back to 7 Alt A to deselect all the vertices um, and then box select the vertices that lie over the x-axis. Now if we rotate around and look at it from a, a 3D position you'll notice, you may notice that there's a face between those vertices because the top of the vertical RSJ had a face on it when we selected those vertices. It hasn't carried through to the others because the spin um, removes them except for the very end one uh, which we've already cut off when we cut the end level to the RSJ. But we need to remove that face. In fact, if I go into um, face select mode, you'll see it much more clearly that there's a face within those vertices. Um, so we need to remove that. So the command to delete a face is X on the keyboard and then down to only faces. And it takes the face out of the middle of, of that loop of vertices now. If we go back into vertex select and alt select anywhere on the um, loop of vertices you'll see now the face has gone. So that cleans that face up 
for um, for the Ark, and it's cleaned all of the faces up in the arrayed copies. Um, the next thing we need to do is put a um, vertical RSJ in the center of the back of the barn, um, which is showing on the reference image. If I just bring in the reference image of the barn, you'll see there's an RSJ that's um, this time 90 degrees round to the other RSJs to support the back sheets of the barn. So we need to um, place that on the back um, the back section of the, the barn. Um, we can't isolate, if we, if we put one on the front it would be on all of the the arcs. So what we need to do now is, is um, apply the the array modifier so that we can now work just on this back arc rather than all of them. So that will make all of these arcs a real item rather than just an array of the first one. And uh, if we tab back into object mode and in the array modifier there's a little drop down at the side of the um, icons at the top of the modifier and you've got the option to apply. It only works in object mode so if we apply that and we now tab back into edit mode every one of the sections has now got its own vertices. So what we need to do is uh, just work on this back section so I'm going to link select the, the back section, actually Alt A to delete everything because the middle vertex was still selected. Link select the back section and then press Shift H which hides everything that isn't selected. They're still in the model, but they're just hidden from the viewport at the moment. Um, so what we can do now is go into numpad 3, so we're looking straight on down the uh, x-axis which was the front view of the barn but number 3 is a side view in um, Blender's layout and if we then Alt A to deselect everything and box select so B for box select and drag the box over one of the um, sets of bottom vertices of an RSJ and then go shift D to copy that while it's still in the, in the movement um, because shift D copies and allows you to move an object while you're still in the movement phase press Y for the axis so you've locked it on the Y axis and move it across so it's roughly central to the um, 3D cursor and the more you zoom in the more accurate you can get that by the number of uh, grid squares you are either side of the main grid. So grab Y, uh, three squares that side, four squares that, so another half a square. So you're roughly central to the back of the bar, central enough so it would, wouldn't be noticed. The next thing is the RSJ on the back face is at 90 degrees. Um, to the RSJs at the side so we need to spin that on the Z axis or rotate it on the Z axis sorry so press R for rotate and Z for the axis and escape because you can see the rotation is happening from the 3D cursor because one of the previous operations we used the uh, 3D cursor as the pivot point so we'll go back into median point because we want to rotate from the center of the selected vertices and press R for rotate, Z for the axis of rotation and 90 for the angle. So we've just rotated it 90 degrees on the Z axis. And now go into top view which is numpad 7 and zoom in again because we want the back face of this um, RSJ to be level with the back of the barn. Now what I'm going to do is activate the snap functions that we've got for the um, edit mode and options and we want to within these options we want to snap to edges and we want to use the active vertex. So what we can do now we've got the barn in 
the RSJ roughly positioned, if we press shift and deselect an end vertex and then reselect it, that becomes the active vertex. Now if we grab it on the X axis, so G, X, oh, escape, I haven't activated the, uh, the mirror, I hadn't actually clicked on the activation button, so grab X, it will now snap to the first um, or to any of the edges that your mouse is over. So we just accepted that on the first edge. And you'll also see when you zoom in, we hadn't quite got it centered um, on the um, X axis. So again, we can just position that by grab G, Y and move it slightly on the Y axis. So it's better centered on the uh, center line of the object. Okay, so that, that's position the RSJ and what we can do now is just extrude that up towards the curved object. And again, if you go into numpad three, so you're on side view, which is looking straight head on down the barn, we can again zoom in, um, select or shift select to deselect one vertex and without moving the mouse, shift select again to select the vertex. So you're on one of the outer vertices and again, grab on the z-axis and it will snap onto the underside of the the curved the curved arc and for this that's good enough in real life you would have all sorts of fitch plates and supports for these items to be bolted together um, if you were doing a model more based on a CAD design then you would have to go into all those details but for a first model that's going to be used just for a, a general purpose image in a scene um, then this is perfectly okay to give you the detail that you would need. So that sets the back um, profile and if we now press Alt H which is to un unhide everything that's hidden in the scene so um, Alt H that brings back all of the other barn frames and we've got the back frame with its center RSJ in the correct position. If you haven't already done so, this is probably a good time to um, to save the barn. So we'll tab tab back into object mode, and on the file menu, um, click file, and then save as. If you haven't already saved it previously, as we described in some of the earlier getting started videos, um, then click save as to open up the file menu. I've already saved this, um, but you need to choose a, a location where you're saving to and um, give it a name. I've chosen barn, uh, cube to barn dot blend and then click save as. As I say, I've already done it, but it's as simple as any, almost any other um, file browser type save menu that you get in most of the programs. So I'll cancel that, but you choose yours and click save as to make sure that you don't lose all the work that you've done up to this point. And that really finishes the, the frame of the barn. So we'll now move on to um, making the purlins and the corrugated steel cladding that goes over the rest of the barn structure. Fortunately, we can reuse some of the geometry from the RSJ frame to create the purlings and corrugated steel. Um, to do this, we need to steal a couple of faces off the top of the curved uh, edge um, of the front frame. So to make it easy, because uh, selecting when you've got multiple frames and what have you can be a little bit awkward, um, what we can do is go into top view, numpad seven, tab into edit mode so um, we can then deselect everything which is the shortcut alt a for deselect all and then reselect the back four frames that were created when the um, array modifier was applied with a box select so b for box select and just drag the selection over the back four frames 
Uh, we can now hide those by pressing the H key and take them out of view. On the front frame, um, we need to select the two top faces of the RSJ just below the X axis. And to do this, just go into face select mode and I'll also go into solid view. So for the shading menu, press Z and press solid. So we can only see the top faces and left click select the first face shift left click select the second face from below the x-axis indicator and we need to now duplicate these so in side view where we're head on looking down the barn uh, you can see the two selected faces we need to copy those and we do that with the duplicate command so shift d to copy or duplicate and then if you move them, press escape to leave them sitting exactly where the original faces are. Um, then to separate those two faces to a new object, we use the shortcut P for parting them from the object. And that brings up the separate menu where we choose um, separate the selection. So they've now um, gone into a, a separate object and in the outliner, the RSJ object we took them from has and below that they've created a new RSJ.001. So if we select and double click that we can change that to Perlins. So we now want to go into the Perlins object. So if we tab back into object mode and then with just the Perlins object selected we can tab back into edit mode for that new item and select both the faces again and in front or the front view of the barn which is uh, numpad 3 to take you to that view uh, we can bring in the the first of the reference images again and we need to now extrude those two faces um, to give us the height of the purlings Perlins and the bottom of the um, corrugated steel and the easy way to do this is using the extrude individual so if you click on extrude uh, you can go down to the extrude individual option and it gives you a widget to allow you to extrude those faces and as you pull the widget up each face will separate slightly we want to position them so they're just below the um, top or the apex of the roof because there's got to be room to put the corrugated steel profile up above the purlins. So that gives us the material we can work from now to make both the purlins and the RSJ. What we need to do is the top edge, top right hand edge we'll use to make the, um, we'll use that to make the um, corrugated steel and we'll use the other um, extruded cube to make the um, purling. So if we with uh, this object in um, edit mode what we can do is select all and then press the slash key to take us into individual object view. Um, there's probably a, a different name for it um, to give it its correct term but this takes the, ob the selected objects and puts them into its own um, 3D window to work on. So what we've got at the moment um, when we extruded the bottom face it never filled the bottom faces back in again so we've got a little bit of work to do before we can separate that edge to turn it into um, the corrugated steel object. So if we go back into vertex select mode we don't need these two vertices because um, it won't be used. We're just using this as a cube and that one edge and we don't need these two vertices. So select and shift select until you've got those four vertices selected and then delete them. So it's X and vertices. That leaves us with an edge and 
the cube that we need to use for the purling. First of all, if you uh, left click select and then shift select the edge that's now on its own and just go back into selection mode to get rid of the widgets. Um, we can part that off to become another object which will be the um, corrugated steel object. So again with that selected press the P key for separate and click on selection. So that item has now come out of the um, Perlin's object and become Perlin's 001 so we can call this one um, corrugated and it's always worth um, changing the names of objects to something recognizable as you work on because some models you can have very big um, lists of items in the outline and it becomes very confusing if it's just called RSJ 001, 002, 003 and you don't know which item is which. So we we're not working on that anymore so what I'm going to do is just tab back into uh, object mode press the slash key on the keyboard again to bring us back into the main view and then select the cube we've created and what we can do is with this cube we'll tab into edit mode select all um, we don't need to select all actually we can use the move widget to resize this down to a, a more realistic size for the purlins if you look on the reference image um, they're quite narrow but not quite as high as the height of the RSJ so what we can do with the widget is first of all going to face select and just select the right hand face and then in the um, transform orientations panel we can change the orientation from global which works on the XYZ axis the global XYZ to the normal so now the widget is facing the directions of the orientation of the face normal that we've got selected so if we go into numpad 3 for a head-on selection we can drag oops, we've got snap still activated so I'll deactivate snap and we can drag that face along the normal until it's roughly um, just over twice as oops, accidentally uh, right clicked just over twice as high as it's wide and that gives us the shape of the timber purling I'm going to spin this twice over the um, RSJ frame so first of all while we've got the move widget activated we can select the inside back face I'll get rid of the reference image again for the moment we can select the face that's back face that's um, on the global x-axis and drag that using the widget to be at almost level with the back face and in numpad 7 um, I'm going to zoom in on that I'll reactivate the snap option and just drag it out till it snaps onto the back edge so we've got the first pearl in set um, and normally on a, a large structure these would be individual items on each between each of the frames um, as I said at the beginning this is uh, a medium to low poly um, construction of a, a simple barn used in a scene where we're not intending close-ups if you was doing close-ups would have to be putting all sorts of um, joining plates and angle irons and things that hold everything in place but at this scale for a first model uh, if it's your first time to blender it keeps it fairly simple so I'll go back into selection mode to get rid of the widget from view and go back into numpad 3 so we're looking head on down the barn and you can see the purling is because we've taken it from the top face it's actually angled um, to be correctly seated on what is the top face of the curved roof of the barn so back in um, vertex select mode we'll select all the vertices with the shortcut A 
and we can now spin them until they come down. So I want two or three more spun until one sits roughly over the top of the RSJ. Um, so we'll use the spin tool as we did when we created the RSJ in the previous video. And the spin tool again is centered on the normal. So I'm going to put this back to global to bring it back onto the global axis. Um, so it's sitting on the Z axis and I'm going to then just activate it slightly to start to spin things, um, which will give us weird results. It's not what we want because we need to change all this in the numpad again. We want to spin down the X axis and at the moment the uh, factor is for spinning is based on the Z axis. So I'm going to change the X axis to one the Z axis to zero to begin with. So we're starting to spin on the X axis and I'm going to use duplicates and I'm going to change the number of steps to three, which will reduce it down to three objects. So we've got three showing on screen. If I go into um, number three again now, what we can do now is use the widget to rotate round until the duplicates are... Um, I'm going to go up to four because I want a separate one on top of there. I just want to get the spacing right. Oh, I've only got that on. That's what the problem is. I've only got that set on uh, two it would, rather than three. So we can again spin it round further and as we did with the RSJ um, we can take down or we can lower the the Z until it looks like they're sitting on top of the RSJ frame. I'm just going to bring the view up with shift and middle mouse button so we can see the widget and the uh, the purlins. So we can reduce the angle all the way back till that one is sitting almost level with the RSJ frame. And then zoom in and the center Z, the height of it, can just be reduced slightly more and the angle increased just, just slightly. So we're sitting roughly four purlins around the edge. So that gives us the location of the top purlins and if we select all we can now mirror them across the um, 3D cursor which again is still sitting on the origin. So for this we're in a median pivot point at the moment. We'll change it back to the 3D cursor with all the items selected we can then um, control M for mirror and along the Y axis for Y for the axis. Ooh, escape, Shift D. We need to duplicate them first. Shift D, Escape, then control M on the Y. And always remember that Escape will take you out of a command if something's gone wrong. Um, control Z is undo, so if, if you've done something wrong you can quickly undo it back to the stage you was at um, and then redo the operation. Uh, it's, it's always a, a, a very good way if you have done something slightly wrong to get back to where you were. Just control Z or escape if you're still in the command. So that gives you all of the roof purlins. Oh, that's still activated so I'll go into selection mode again and Alt A to deselect all and tab Alt A. You can see we've now got the purlins sitting around the roof um, and still sitting on the front center line we've got the item that we're going to use for the corrugated steel but before that I just need to manually create a couple more purlins um, to sit on the edge of the frame and a couple to run across the back. So to do that what I'm going to do is go into numpad 3 again and just steal a vertex off 
one of these purlins and then shift D bring it down and just sit it on the outer edge of the vertical RSJ um, we can estimate where we can where the run of the a corrugated steel will come just extrude it on the z-axis a little and then select both extrude them on the y-axis just to form a square at this stage what we can do then is put the corrugated steel roof in place um, just I'm going to leave that as it is because that's the um, to remind us to put the other purlins in so we'll work on the corrugated steel next so we're in object mode so we can either select the corrugated object in the outliner or we could find it in the 3d view which isn't easy because it's quite a small object to find um, go back into numpad 5 because uh, the orthographic view gives us a better option for zooming in and that um, edge what I'm going to do is subdivide it so right click and um, sorry tab into edit mode select all right click for the context menu and just click on subdivide and then select the first two vertices and extrude them on the z-axis to form um, a, a roughly square face so extrude with the shortcut E and then Z for the z-axis and just drag the new face up a little bit so it's roughly square or rectangular because they don't stand up as high as they're, they're wide and then scale while the two new vertices are selected um, change back to the medium point and just scale them in slightly to give us a more angular profile than just 90 degrees and then we can delete the edge that sits underneath that upstand so go select the, the two vertices which is um, left mouse button shift left mouse button and then X to delete the edges so we've got the profile of one section of corrugated steel so we'll select all just so it's highlighted and we can see it and then again we'll use the array modifier so in the properties window in the modifiers tab we'll click add new modifier array and we'll set that up on the minus x-axis because we can see the first copy is coming in the wrong direction so in front of the factor we can put minus one and we've got the copy now that will run all the way down the roof so we've got to go into numpad 7 um, and then up the amount of copies until we're roughly at the end I'm going to tab into object mode um, because it's more visible and what I want to do is just get um, a little bit further past the edge of the roof so it overhangs um, and that's probably perfect half of the width of the original original edge um, but this side also needs to overhang so numpad 7 I'm gonna go grab X and just bring it in fact I'll bring it a full um, profile one profile off that edge and just increase this number count by one more and then grab X and level it up so it overhangs just gives you a weather overhang for the um, vertical sheets that sit below it so that gives us the profile and again we need to tab into edit mode so we can spin this profile over the top of the purlins and out past the front edge a little of the barn or the side edge of the barn rather so go into numpad 3 and again using the spin modifier 
activate the modifier give it a bit of angle which will spin it around itself because at the moment it's spinning um, in a weird direction but I'm going to change that from the z-axis back to the x-axis so put the factor as 1 and 0 on the z and that starts to spin it again we're going in the opposite direction so using the widget numpad 3 we can take the angle so it goes past the end of the barn and we can increase the number count up to a, a higher number we use 12 for the RSJs so I'll use um, the similar number count on this one and then we can reset the vertical height of this either dragging it with the widget to bring it out to sit closely on top of the purlins I'm just going to change that closer in so it just sits closely on top of the purlins and it gives us a rough idea now where we can finish the the end um, support that sits on top of the RSJ so zoom out change the um, the angle so it brings it back so again it sits roughly one iteration or, or one um, step past the end of the barn to give us some overhang again and that gives us the first half of the corrugated steel roof if we tab back into edit mode you can see it probably needs to just come up very slightly so I'll go numpad 3 and grab on the Z axis just so the uh, purlins don't poke through but that gives us the first curve of the barn so tab back into edit mode select all and then we can mirror it across to the other side so we'll go into numpad 3 and again change to the 3d cursor pivot point shift D to duplicate control M to mirror on the Y axis and enter and that gives us the barn roof now there's one or two things to clean up on there and that's select all and press M to merge by distance it's not merged any so the left mouse uh, that's the array modifier so we don't need that merge by distance so what we need to do for some reason that didn't sit exactly on the center line possibly because of the angle of the barn um, the top of the RSJ so if we um, control Z to un unmirror everything and go into numpad 3 select Uh, Z for wireframe, Alt A to deselect all, then box select these first vertices, and because we're in the pivot point, we can go scale Y zero, enter. It pulls them onto the center line. Just these these first ones, just that tiny fraction, and then select all, Shift D to duplicate them, Escape, Control M. To mirror on the Y axis. Enter, then select all, merge by distance, and it's moved 135 vertices, so we've got a duplicated copy sitting on top as well on that point. But again, Z, solid view, we've now got the roof, corrugated roof, fairly high poly, um, but sitting just above the purlins below so when you look at it from below it's starting to look like a Dutch barn roof so that's creating the roof um, we now need to use the reference image again to finish off some of the purlins so if we go back into the purlins object that sits under there I'm going to take the 
um, corrugated steel out of view by just removing the eye icon or closing the eye icon in the outliner and we're with the purlins selected tab into edit mode select all no sorry I didn't quite tab into edit mode um, again just select just the purlins tab into edit mode select all and when we mirrored across we didn't um, realign the normals so we need to press shift n to recalculate the normals out on this side of the purlins and i'm going to go back into the corrugated steel and bring that back into view tab into object mode select the corrugated steel tab back into edit mode select all and shift n just to correct any errors with the face normals on that so we've got the roof sitting over the top of the purlins and it's starting to look a bit like a dutch barn uh, we can now tab back into object mode and uh, it's a good time really to save the the work we've done on the project um, so in the menu system press file save or the shortcut like most programs is control s and that will save the work to the hard drive with the roof now sheeted out it's probably a good time to break from this video as it's been running for more than 40 minutes we'll continue in video number 12 with the side sheeting and um, back of the barn and coloring the components and outputting a render of what's been created Hopefully you're finding this useful. Uh, I'm adding as much detail as I can at this early stage for any new users to understand what's going on rather than just what buttons are being pressed. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. It will help others find the video and also inform you when the next video is out in this uh, tutorial series. And also encourage me to continue making more projects that I've got planned for the coming months and years. Thanks for watching and see you again in video number 12.